When it comes to typing without looking at the keyboard, also known as touch typing, everything revolves around the set of keys known as the home row. Learning this position and memorizing the key locations is essential to branching out to other keys on the keyboard and becoming a skilled touch typist, which will speed up your ability to complete tasks, to communicate digitally, and it will free up time for you to accomplish more or to spend with friends and family. Hi everyone, I'm Anson Alexander. I've been touch typing since the 1990s and I've been providing typing instruction since the early 2000s. In this lesson and the ones that follow, I will take you from a sluggish hunt and peck typist to a speedy touch typist ready for any task. Let's take a look at the home row position, how the keystrokes look for these keys, and then we'll talk about how we can practice and expand our reach on the keyboard. The home row position consists of the starting and resting keys for each finger. These are the keys that your fingers should return to after typing every single keystroke. As you can see in the typing chart, the home row keys for the left hand are A, S, D, and F. For the right hand, the home row keys are J, K, L, and semicolon. Both of your thumbs will rest upon the space bar as that is the only key typed by the thumbs. This typing chart is available on AnsonAlex.com to print or download, which I recommend so that throughout the course and your practicing, you can refer to the chart instead of looking at the keyboard. So for the home row, your left pinky finger will rest on the A key, left ring finger on S, middle finger on D, and index finger on F. Your thumb can be at the space bar. For the right hand, your right pinky finger will rest on semicolon, your left ring finger on L, your left middle finger on K, and your left index finger on J. Again, your thumb can be down here at the space bar. This is the complete home row position, and it's from here that you will create and communicate with lightning speed. Obviously, if we're just typing keys in the home row, getting back to this position shouldn't be a problem. But as we start to expand our reach on the keyboard, getting back to this home row position will become essential. The home row gives us a central position to easily access all of the other keys on the keyboard. It also allows us to type without looking at the keys because if we know that our fingers are on the home row, then we can memorize the movements that they need to make to reach the particular keys. If we don't know where they are on the keyboard, then they're not going to access the keys that we're looking for very well. This repetition creates what is called muscle memory, which over time will make it so that you don't even really have to think about which key you're typing, your fingers will just type it for you. As this is an introductory lesson to touch typing, I'm not going to go into all of the details of muscle memory in this video, but in lessons two and three, where I cover the index fingers and the middle fingers, I go into quite a bit of detail into why muscle memory is important and how repetition helps create it. So if you're looking to expand your reach on the keyboard and learn more about muscle memory, flexibility, and strength, don't forget to check out those lessons as well. For now, remember that it is critical to return your fingers to the home row after every single keystroke. Even if you're going to be typing the same letters twice in a row, take them back to the home row. It's this repetition that will create muscle memory and turn you from that sluggish hunt and peck typer into a speedy touch typist. Okay, so we know where to put our fingers on the keyboard, but before we start typing, let's talk about positioning and posture. Posture is important for typing for a few different reasons. First of all, it will allow you to type at maximum speed and efficiency. If your posture is off, your muscles will have to work harder, and you may start making more mistakes if you're constantly changing your position, which will throw off your muscle memory. Your elbows should be at a 90 degree angle or wider, and your wrists should be as straight as possible. Your feet should be flat on the ground, back straight, and the computer screen should be slightly below your eye level. It's really important to pay attention to your wrists. If they're curled up or resting on a big thick wrist pad, you may develop wrist complications from typing repetitively. With proper posture, you'll just be gaining muscle and flexibility without the negative side effects. Pay attention to this. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about making the keystrokes. When first starting out on the home row, your biggest challenges will be keeping your pinkies and middle fingers on the right keys and not typing multiple letters at once when you go to type a single key. Okay, so here's what the keystrokes look like for the left hand. A, S, D, F. For the right hand, J, K, L, semicolon. 
Notice that all of my fingers remain on their home row position and I'm able to control them so that they're not pressing a key down when I'm typing a different letter. This may take a little bit of practice and you may notice that when you first start, when you're using those ring and pinky fingers, you're hitting multiple keys at once because it's hard to, to move your hand only one finger instead of kind of moving that whole side of your hand. So that takes practice and don't worry if that's happening, you'll get better with time. Let's take a look at practicing. The best way to start is to open up a blank document and just start typing the letters that you've learned. So we can type A, S, D, F, space, J, K, L, semicolon. Then we can maybe do it with a space between each one. So we can go A, space, S, space, D, space, F, space, J, space, K, space, L, space, semicolon. If a particular finger feels uncomfortable or is providing difficulties, then start typing that keystroke over and over again. You can see A, A, A space, A space, A space. And we can go and we can do S space, S space, S space, and just keep doing that for each keystroke. You'll notice that, again, you may hit multiple let keys in a row, and that's when you know that you need to practice that keystroke because uh, if you're hitting multiple in a row, then you don't have full control over that finger. You're kind of moving your entire hand instead of that one key. So you can see I can hit all of these keys repetitively while keeping all my other fingers in their home row position. You can use either thumb for the space bar and there will be more about that in upcoming lessons. Make sure you spend enough time on the home row to memorize where all of the keys are located and to be able to make those keystrokes without looking at the keyboard. At this point, it may be difficult to use your touch typing skills in your everyday tasks. Besides, you only know seven letters at this point. But as you progress through lessons two and three, it will become increasingly easy to use touch typing every day in your normal tasks, and it will provide valuable practice opportunities for you to improve your skill even further. Once you're ready, move on over to lesson number two, where I cover all of the keystrokes for the index fingers and provide valuable strategies on practicing and staying motivated. It's important to note that the time it takes someone to learn how to touch type varies, but it is something that's learned over time and not right away. It takes time to build that muscle memory. Until we can just put a touch typing chip in our brain and just know how to do it, this is the only way to gain this skill. Depending on your current skill level and how much time you have available to devote to practicing, it may take you weeks, months, or even more than a year to become an efficient touch typist. It's important to self-monitor your progress and be honest with yourself about where you are with your touch typing skill and what you need to do to progress to the next level. In this typing course, there are four more lessons, one for the index fingers, one for the middle fingers, one for the ring and pinky fingers, and a bonus lesson where I divulge an advanced typing technique that can help even the fastest of typers type faster. I've also authored a full typing course on LinkedIn Learning that provides additional in-depth instruction. On my website, AnsonAlex.com, I have additional typing instruction in text format, practice materials, and the typing finger chart that I showed earlier on in the video. All of these links are in the description. If you're serious about becoming a full-fledged touch typist, I can help you get there. If you follow my lessons and put in the work, you will be flying on the keyboard in no time. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube and don't be afraid to show off your typing skills in the comments section. If you want to see more typing instruction and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for today. Good luck conquering the keyboard. I'll see you in the next one. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.